Everyone, David Bumble coming to you from Cisco Live with the amazing John. John, what are we talking about today? Today we're going to be talking about ChatGPT plugins, specifically one called Network GPT that I unveiled yesterday in the Cisco U Theater. You're going to show us a demo, right? We're going to do a bit of a demo. So there's actually three of us here today. There's David, John, and ChatGPT on this laptop. So I say, hello, my name is John Capobianco. I'm here with the amazing David Bumble at Cisco Live in Las Vegas. David would like to see the Network GPT plugins in action and may ask you some questions about the network. Would you be so kind as to welcome David and say a little bit about how ChatGPT plugins work? Now it welcomes David and I here to Cisco Live and explains that GPT plugins are a powerful feature that allow the base GPT model to interact with external systems. Now in the case of the network GPT plugin, it's designed to interact with Cisco network data. Who wrote that? I wrote this. I was given beta access two weeks ago and, and I've spent every, every free moment I've had <laughs> getting this to work. So you wrote that, and did you work with the ChatGPT guys to integrate it? No, no, I, I, I struggled on my own, I worked it out on my own. There was a lot to, to figure out from how to get the cross-site scripting as it's known to work. Once I had that sorted out, it all sort of fell into place. So the magic behind this, David, is two simple files. One's called an AI-plugin file, which is JSON, and that describes as a manifest what the plugin does and how it works. And then there's an open API YAML file that maps your API. That's it. So are you talking to ChatGPT's API or did you make your own API and then? I, I made my own API in Django that responds to ChatGPT invoking the API through the plugin. That's amazing. Okay, so what David's going to do now is actually ask GPT through my plugin Simple question, please tell me if I have any interfaces that are down. Now imagine coming in Monday morning and you just ask the question, do I have any interfaces that are down? So David, as you see, it's invoked the plugin and when I expand this, you'll see that it's actually running show IP interface brief. Now if I bring up my server, you can see the PyETS code running and this will return, right, there's the interface brief. And just to prove, we do have two interfaces down. Do you think the AI is going to be able to detect that? Here is the response from AI. Based on the current network data, there are two interfaces that are down. That is good. You know what's really neat? It gives us insight. They're administratively down. They're not just down, they're administratively down. Did we, did we even mention that? No. We just said, right, do I have the interfaces down? Now, do you want to turn them on? Yeah, that'd be great. All right, so let's no, you say. you type it, yeah. All right, so I'm going to say, could you please Enable these ports, refresh the data, and confirm they are enabled. So now, we're doing configuration management through human prompts. Not config T, or Postman, or curl, or APIs, or portals, or dashboards. A simple human prompt. And what it's going to do is push that code. I'm going to expand this, and you can see here, GI2, no shut. GI3, no shut. And then I hope it will ask the plugin again to refresh the new state and then confirm that it's enabled the ports. Yeah, something really important you said is it's this is new code, so it, sometimes it doesn't run perfectly? The issue is your token limit. Okay. So sometimes if you send it too much data, let's say show logging and your logs are from, haven't been refreshed in a few weeks, you only have 8,100 tokens, and that's bi-directional. So if you send it six, it can only return two, right? So you have to watch the amount of data you send it, and check this out. It's invoked the plugin twice and confirmed after enabling the interfaces and refreshing the data, here is the new current status. And we can see that two and three are now up, so both interfaces are now up and enabled just by asking it to do that. That's a brilliant demo. I love that. I, I, that means a lot coming from you. I'm, I'm so proud of this work, and it's really like computer. I'd like an Earl Grey tea, right? Exactly. It's like Star Trek Next Generation. Now I'm curious, how on earth does it actually work? Can you show us a bit of the code? Sure, I can show you the code. So we're looking at an AI plugin JSON file right now. What this is is, a, is known as a manifest. And as you can see, we have a schema version, a name for the human, network GPT plugin. Now David, I think the key here is this description for model. So when GPT, it needs some instructions on when to invoke the plugin. So this description for the model, as you can see, says plug into Cisco network JSON data. So anything like do I have any interfaces down? It looks at that and says, oh, this plugin can help me. Now you can see there's actually auth in here. So we could put OAuth 2, bear tokens, basic auth. If you're doing local development like I am, you can see it's on local host. 
the auth has to be none. Just a tip for you developers that are going to start building this. Auth has to be none, and everything has to be HTTP, not HTTPS, if you're doing it on local host. The only other thing to point out is under the API, we map the open API YAML file. Now, I'm going to show you that next. And this is actually a standard in the industry, openapi.yaml files. And let's just take a look at, say, Meraki events. So this, David, is the path to my URL. So when I visit localhost slash Meraki events, that's going to trigger the get to go pull the Meraki data. And as you see, we just map the get, we give it an operation ID, a description, and then we can even map the response codes, 200, 201, 404, 400, and how the plugin should handle each of those response codes. This is unbelievable, dude. I'm amazed. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I'm really proud of this work. And I can even show you the logs. You'll notice here in the terminal, you'll see the history of the Pi ATS job. So that API call from the plugin is actually triggering this Pi ATS under the hood to interact with our network automatically. So now you got to tell me, right? Your background, is it networking or is it coding? A bit of both. It's really funny. I went to school to be a programmer. I graduated as a computer programmer analyst, but my job placement in our co-op in the last year was with a help desk. So I got the field experience in, you know, in IT, but the diploma in programming. And at the time, I had more opportunities. Let's say I got my A+, my N+, my CCNA, and on and on and on. You know, networking for 20 years. But what that this is a great question. We're at a moment in time where the two have converged. Yep. Programming is no longer a silo, siloed from networking. Networking is programming today. And I'm so excited, I love your message. I mean, I love what you've done here because the concern from a lot of people is AI is gonna take away our jobs, but you've got a demo where AI is enhancing our jobs, making it easier, right? I completely agree, it's an augmentation. It's not a replacement. It's going to help us and make it easier. Imagine, Monday morning, I sit in my office chair and I say, is my network healthy? And it calls 30 or 50 plugins, my core, my, my SD-WAN, my Meraki, go get all this data and say, yeah, the network looks pretty healthy right now. Or, actually, there's a serious issue going on in this building, right? Just through contextual, human, conversational prompts. So, what do I have to learn to be like you to do this? Which language is this? This is not Python. You mentioned some languages, right? Actually, so if you want to programmatically do this instead of using this chat GPT interface, it has an API system and it has a Python SDK. So you can make requests through a Python script similar to the chat window. And actually, it's more flexible and more powerful because you can say the server, meaning you are a chatbot or you are a girl guide or you are a network engineer, and then the user, please help me understand this routing table. Versus in the chat, I'm sort of limited to just the user sort of side of things. The other thing is, think of it this way, it's just another API. So if I have an existing CI-CD pipeline, yep where I'm, I'm doing certain actions in order programmatically, it's very easy to insert AI at those key points in your pipeline, right? I have these new logs. Good opportunity to send them to AI and say, help me understand these logs. I've just done a Terraform deployment or an Ansible build or a, a PyTS job. Send those results to the AI. It's just another API call, right? John, that's amazing, but is it going to be on GitHub? Or how do I get hold of the code? It's a great question. So. I've developed this on my own, in my own time, in the last two weeks, really. Two weeks. So it's so bleeding edge. Cisco's committed, as you know, to responsible AI. And at this point, we need to put more safeguards and controls and be comfortable with it and really test it and drive it at scale before it comes available as a release. But now that I've shown it here at Cisco Live, I hope to be exploring it more on YouTube and through streaming and interviews. So you're gonna hear more about it. I don't know when it's going to be something you can install yourself, but I hope soon. John, that's fantastic. Thanks so much.